In today's episode, I'm going to make a couple of floating wall shelves with LEDs. I've got a few leftover cherry boards from a barstool episode that's perfect for this project. To break down the cherry, I'm using the jigsaw because it's too wide to cut on the miter saw. Next, I rip the parts to rough width at the table saw. The final width of the shelves are 5 and 3 quarters of an inch, so I set the saw fence to 6 inches so I can have a little bit of room to clean that up after milling. And finally, I cut the parts to rough length at the miter saw. The smaller the boards, the faster it is to flatten them at the joiner. And speaking of the joiner, I begin by flattening one face and then place that face up against the fence to get a 90 degree edge. While I'm milling up the lumber, I wanted to thank Acme Tools for sponsoring this build video. They are part of the reason why I'm still able to make these videos for you guys. It's sponsors like this that come through that really help me out. Acme Tools offers the highest quality of products at competitive prices since 1948. They offer a wide selection of tools and equipment for woodworkers, do-it-yourselfers, and contractors from all the major manufacturers. For more information, check them out at acmetools.com. With one flat reference face, I can run them through the planer to take them down to the thickness of one and an eighth. I now take the boards down to the final width of five and three quarters at the table saw. To cut the boards to length, I'm using my miter gauge with the stop block. The first board I cut to length is eight and a half inches long. I clean up one end and then place that end up against the stop block to cut it to size. The next piece I cut was nine and a half inches long. And I cut the third board to a length of 20 inches. The joinery method I chose for the shelves were miter joints. An easier alternative would be a simple butt joint with screws for reinforcement. The top and bottom shelf parts only have a miter on one end, whereas the vertical board has a miter on both ends, so it's worth taking a second to mark the boards so they don't get confused when it comes time to cutting them at the table saw. To begin cutting the miters, I tilt the blade to 45 degrees. I use a magnetic angle finder to help make sure that the tilted blade is actually 45 degrees. With the stop block set, I begin by cutting a miter on one end of each of the shorter boards. Next, I reset the stop block for the vertical piece that gets a miter on both ends. And finally, I cut the single miter on the longer shelf piece. I installed a 45 degree chamfering bit at the router table and slowly removed the waste until the chamfer looked good to my eye. To help with tear out while routing the end grain, I'm backing up that piece with the scrap board. The second design element, if you'll call it that, are LEDs. The shelves are going to have a groove routed down the center of the boards. The LEDs I'm using are battery powered, so there's no outlet required. Now the grooves on the top and the bottom boards are going to be stopped grooves so that I don't plow through the ends of the boards. So I made a mark one inch from the edge. This will help me line up the cut. I line up the marks and slowly push down on the board. And once it's flat on the table, I put forward pressure on the board to route the rest of the groove. The vertical board, however, has this groove from end to end. Since the miter joint is an end grain to end grain glue joint, we're going to need to reinforce it. I'm going to use loose tenon joinery that's cut using the Festool Domino. An alternative to using the Domino would be to use miter keys or miter splines. I'll link to a video below that I've made showing how to cut these on the table saw. It's fairly simple. Finally, I can start the process of marking the back side of the shelves for the mounting hardware. I'm putting the hardware on the longer boards because they will have the heaviest items on them. So to begin, I'll make a mark 5 inches from each end of the board. Next, using my square, I find the center and make another mark. This mark tells me where I need to drill. I chuck up a half inch bit in my drill press and drill a 4.5 inch deep hole. My drill press wasn't able to drill that deep, so I had to finish using my cordless drill. Next I need to route a 3 quarter inch groove so that the hardware will be hidden and the shelves will sit flush up against the wall. I make a mark 2 inches from the left and the right of the hole. This is going to be the full width of the groove. I made mine a little bit wider than the bracket just in case I need to move it around a little on the wall as the brackets are adjustable. To make the grooves, I'm using my plunge router with an edge guide installed as well as a 3 quarter inch straight bit. I line up the bit and plunge down a quarter of an inch at a time until the groove is a half inch deep. Next, I hit the edges of the board with my smoothing plane to remove any marks. And then I switched over to sand the surfaces using a 120 and then 150 and 180 grit sandpaper on my orbital sander. To help prevent any glue from getting on the surfaces during the glue up, I put some masking tape on the boards right up against the miters. 
When the glue dries, I can just pop the tape off and the glue squeeze out comes with it. Speaking of the glue ups, I can now start that process by putting glue in the domino holes and then on the miters. This is a pretty straightforward glue up. It's essentially a three sided box. I put a few clamps on the shelves to help pull everything together and I also made sure that the corners were 90 degrees to one another using my combination square. I let the shelves set overnight and the clamps. For the finish, I wiped on three coats of a wiping varnish using a cotton cloth. Since these are shelves, they don't need a whole lot of protection, so I stopped after three coats. I sanded between each coat using 320 grit sandpaper. With the finish dried, I could install the LEDs. The LEDs I purchased are adhesive back, so it's as simple as pulling the paper off the back and then sticking them into place. But before I did that, I did a trial run to see where I needed to cut the LED strip. The strip has indicators letting you know where you can safely cut the strip and it'll continue to work. With the strip cut to length, I pulled the paper off the back and then pushed it into the groove the same way I did during the trial run. And now we are ready to mount the shelves. The hardware comes with wall anchors, but the screws are too big and they cause the anchors to just spin in the wall. So I went to my local hardware store and bought eight self-tapping wall anchors that you see here. Off camera, I made a template to help me figure out where to place the holes for the brackets. It's just a cut off from the longer shelf board and it's the same exact length and width, so it's perfect for this. I drilled a few holes, so all you have to do is measure up 54 inches from the floor, throw a level on the top of the template, and then mark the holes for the wall anchors. To install the anchors, you don't really have to use a hammer, but I like to tap the anchors in right up to where the threads start. You can use a screwdriver, but I like the control a hammer gives me. Next, I put the washers on the screws and mounted the brackets. I left the brackets a little loose so that I can level it up before tightening them. With the brackets installed, I slid the shelf into place. If you notice your shelf is not setting flush against the wall, the brackets are adjustable, as you can see here. The top of my shelves weren't flush, so I adjusted it and now it's perfect. To install the second shelf, I placed a level on top of the first shelf and scribed a line all the way across the bottom of the level. Now it's just as simple as placing my template up against that line and then make a few marks for the wall anchors. I installed the four anchors and then the four brackets before putting the shelf into place. And the shelves are finally done. I love the modern look of these shelves and the LEDs is a nice touch. This design is nice in that you can rearrange them to form different shapes like an S or keep them in this rectangular position. The cherry will be beautiful in a few years when it starts to age a little bit. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, please leave a comment below and let me know. Hit the like button and subscribe to my channel if you're not already.